The Goat House is back after the ass beating on Sunday Night Football here with my biggest winners and losers of week four so far. We are highlighting the very best, the most impressive teams and the most disappointing team. So highlighting the select few on each side here. Let's take a look at what I got. Starting with my biggest winners, we are highlighting the top three. Also have a couple honorable mentions, but sometimes in this video, people are like, why isn't my favorite team in there? Why aren't they number one? The next video, Monday night, we break down every single NFL team's week four performance. This video is really highlighting the best of the best and the worst of the worst of the week. Want this to be a, an accomplishment for teams to make this winner's list. So starting at number three, Tampa Bay Buccaneers beating up the Eagles 33-16. to So a dominant victory. Eagles did start to push back a little bit, come back a little bit. But it did feel like this was the Bucs game from the start. Absolutely dominant. They took advantage of the Eagles being very beat up. Once you saw the inactives of the Eagles, especially on offense, it was kind of obvious or it should have been obvious that the Bucs should win this game. And they took care of business. But again, you say the Eagles are beat up, but the the Buccaneers are beat up as well, like Winfield, a big name, among others. I know the Eagles are a little more costly. They're inactives, but the Bucks still beat up and they handle business, but something else that really stands out, the Eagles really weren't injured on defense. And on defense, they were lights out against the Saints, the red-hot offensive Saints last week, going in, remember, going into last week. So it kind of looked like a matchup. The healthy Eagles defense, you know, unlike the offense, versus this Bucks offense that struggled last week. And the Bucks handled business. Baker balled out. Look like the look like the Baker from the first couple weeks. You know, running with toughness, throwing all over the field. Everybody stood out on offense, kind of like the first couple weeks. And that's what was great. Like uh, the uh, the team effort. Looking at all the receivers, we talked about going into the year. Watch out for their sneaky one-two punch at running back. Well, White and Irving both made a, made an impact. Ran for exactly the same amount of yardage. Irving uh, tacked down tacked on a touchdown as well. The defense did their job early. It was key in this game. The biggest key for the Bucks in this game, especially once you saw who was ruled out, was yeah to get. I mean, that's anybody's key, but it's because it's going to sound funny. But get to get a lead because the Eagles' best bet is running the football with their new star Saquon Barkley with the receivers out. So if the Bucks get a lead. Force them in passing situations, they're likely going to win because they can't run the ball as much as they want to, and that's exactly what the Bucks did. Otherwise, I do think the Eagles would have stayed in the game and ran all... I mean, Barkley was very efficient against them, even though he was kind of limited because they were down by so much right away. So that was kind of the negative for the Bucs is that, yeah, the, the run defense did look a little iffy still, but they kind of took that away from them from the start. They were mainly playing the pass, so that's probably why he was... Able, well, and he's Saquon Barkley, but able to get that many yards. But they were getting, they were taking advantage of Lane Johnson being out. But I mean, it's only one guy out on a great offensive line. They were getting after Hurts, forcing fumbles, uh, just making him super uncomfortable. So it's a heck of a job by the Bucks. I mean, they they did so good. Where maybe they're deserving of number one, but there's just that many top teams here uh, this week. But they come in at number three after a dominant victory. Number two on the big winners of Week Four. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens. I know it feels like a number one, but there's so many good teams, and they just played. They just won 35 to. 10 against the red hot Buffalo Bills. The matchup did favor the Ravens. They took advantage of what what favored them and and that is their game, running the football which they tried to win in different ways. It felt like the first couple weeks they probably didn't run the ball enough, you know. So this is kind of what we knew about the Ravens. Like they can win regular season games running the football, you know, but can they win throwing the ball? But I thought Lamar did pretty good throwing the ball when he was asked to do it. It wasn't a ton. Uh, but I thought he was accurate. Uh, you know, there was even some accurate balls that didn't even get caught. Mark, Mark Andrews had a bad drop. Zay Flowers had a drop. Uh, that was a beautiful ball by Lamar. There was a couple more, actually. But, yeah, didn't incomplete too many passes. The ones he did, I thought could have been caught. Uh, you know, maybe one bad throw that Aglor saved an interception on. But it still was in the area for him to make a play. But I thought he played pretty well. Got Justice Hill going in the, in the receiving game as well. But the big talk, Derrick Henry, absolutely dominant. 199, one shy of 200. First play of offense for him gone you see he still has that long speed he's crazy he has crazy long speed he doesn't have the quickness he has the long speed though absolutely dominant the offensive line has gotten so much better since week one uh the bills where their week is run defense it hasn't really shown yet this year because they've gotten big leads so the ravens gave it to them so the ravens did have the advantage and they took care of business you know for me to be super 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 impressed yeah i want to see them beat teams with the pass or being in uncomfortable situations but overall we are impressed very much with a 35-10 victory against the Buffalo Bills. De <laughs> Excuse me, defensively, they were getting after 
Josh Allen as well. Van Noy, good to see him healthy because he was getting after him. OA is really coming along. Felt like Kyle Hamilton was everywhere, which is typical. Uh, you know, Humphrey making good plays. Wiggins, the way he breaks on the ball. So there's a lot of guys that really stood out. I mean, look, we didn't highlight Lamar running the ball as well. Uh, ran all over them. So when there's there's a lot of teams out there that cannot stop the run right now, and running the running game is making a comeback. While the Ravens were kind of toying a little bit more with the passing in the first couple of weeks to see if they can do that. In last week against the Cowboys, went back a little more towards the run. So what my point is, they're very good with the run game and, and the offensive line. The tight ends are getting better at run blocking. Uh, as they should, like kind of how the Ravens should be, and that makes them dangerous once again as a regular season team. If they come across a team that is really, really stout, stopping a run, which is kind of rare, then we have, then they maybe have a battle. But uh, again, you dominate the Bills like that, one of the hottest teams. You're going to be on this list for sure. They're at the top, and it feels like another number one performance. But I have to split these up. There's one team that just really stood out slightly above the rest and the number one biggest winner of week four so far has to be the Washington Commanders after a dominant dominant win in Arizona over the Cardinals 42 to 14 you could argue going into this game there's some things that kind of favor the Cardinals the amount of, the way the Commanders run deep you know run their defense and kind of favors Kyler Murray we saw it on the first drive but the Commanders it just makes it that much sweeter for the Commanders much more even that much more impressive that they dominated them in this game both sides of the ball, too. How about the defense? That's the big thing here. The defense really st stepped up, mainly the defensive line. I mean, everybody was involved in getting after Kyler Murray. I thought Dorrance Armstrong really stood out. Jonathan Allen. I mean, all these multiple guys getting after him, just making him uncomfortable. He's actually been one of the better quarterbacks thus far, and they made it look like the opposite. You know, he was making weird decisions, holding on the ball a little bit too long, but he didn't have open receivers. So, I mean, that, that's credit to the coverage. So, I was very impressed with the defense, and if they were going to let the card, or if, if the Cardinals were going to move the ball, it was going. You were going to have to really grind it out and run clock while the Commanders themselves were running clock on offense, and then they were scoring as well. But how about the offense? The offense has been extremely, extremely explosive. Uh, Jaden Daniels, two weeks in a row, he's great, absolutely great, and elevating other players around him. I mean, what is Zacchaeus lead in receiving, and you know just. Jeremy McNichols gets in there and he's looking great. Brian Robinson was their best runner, by the way. But I mean, just anyone in that system is balling out right now. The only thing that I, I think of is remember the Kingsbury early in seasons, the first couple of years in Arizona. This is how the beginning of seasons went. Um, I, I like, I'm going to stay optimistic, say it's different here. They're just getting started here with Washington, but it's electrifying right now. It's electric. They're, they're really getting going. Um, another team effort. Looked very well coached. Again, I'm, I'm Daniels is the big talk, and she probably should be what he's doing right now. And I mean, Robinson played well. McLaurin still making big plays. Offensive line. There was times where Daniels is just kind of sitting back there. Just the differences in offensive line, offensive lines in this game. Commanders versus Cardinals. I mean, just insane. But my point is, how about the defense? So I mean, the, all those things you're highlighting, the defense in. It's shocking, actually. I, I thought in Arizona, kind of like, kind of like the Ravens again. I thought, you know, they they uh, had the matchup favor. I thought the Cardinals would have the matchup in this one, especially at home, the way they play. Uh, and the Commanders not only proved that wrong, but just like dominated that, made that not a non X factor. So, uh, Commanders very much on everyone's radar, like very much impressive by everyone to everyone right now. You would think. And they are deserving of being that number one biggest winner. And I never could just pick three. Pick just three. I mean, I got to shout out a couple other teams that are just really tough to leave them off this list. But I had to. The Colts being the big one. They beat an undefeated Steelers team. And they would be next up here. And it's hard not putting them on here. But at the same time, your 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 quarterback goes down. And he's going to be okay. That's not, he's even can play next week. Anthony Richardson, that is. But just kind of flashbacks of last year. Just getting banged up, banged up. Then boom, he's out for the year. So it's not great. And he, Flacco comes in and wins the game, and it kind of creates this controversy that really doesn't exist there. Like, obviously, if Richardson's okay, he's playing, but it kind of creates this talk. But I think it's an assumption. I think if Richardson was in the way it was going, the way he was running, but they probably would have kept a bigger lead, possibly. But, yeah, who knows? Would he have turned the ball over a couple of times? Would it would have changed the game? Who knows? All assumption. But, you know, so that... It's a small, small, small negative because you won the game, obviously. And then Jonathan Taylor deal, you know, ends up you know, ran great, but ends up with a high ankle sprain. So maybe that those are little things there. And they did let they did let Justin Fields throw on them all of a sudden, even though they were dominating for a little bit. 
So the defense looked great, then it kind of went down a little bit. So those are the things, the little things that are kind of keeping them off the, off the top three. But overall, they're much better the last couple weeks than they were the first couple weeks. They're like one of the worst teams in football the first couple weeks. So they're being the players are coachable right now, and, and they're making some some steps, some strides. So that's great. And then the Vikings. The Vikings probably would have been in the top three once again if they didn't bl- almost blow an, in one, an historic lead. I mean, it wouldn't have been number one. The Vikings hold, hold that, actually making it come back um, you know, against the Colts a few years ago. But, yeah, it was pretty disastrous in the second half. I actually kind of started at the end of the first half with that muff punt, which was, was a bad one. It kind of gifted the Packers some points. But, um, yeah, the Packers really adjusted. And the Vikings were still moving the ball when they wanted to in the second half. They kind of just couple little things that that shot themselves you know that shot them in the cells in the foot there uh, about to score early in the second half interception which they showed a zoomed in I thought he bobbled that all the way to the ground so I was surprised that that didn't get overturned but but the Vikings could could play obviously uh, they get a huge lead uh, explosive they can win and it feels like they can win in multiple in several ways the defense has been unreal with the playmaking ability and the confusion it gives offenses but want to put a full game together here so they did a little bit scary but uh, overall I mean they're 4-0 like one of the better teams through four weeks so far so you have to shout out them as well now on to the biggest losers of week four starting at three going to one got a couple honorable mentions but hard to believe the Jets are at number three it feels like they're worthy of being number one uh they lose to the Broncos 10-9 to never would have expected that in a million years even with the Broncos playing well last week but mainly the the, the Jets not scoring a touchdown only finishing with nine points uh, yeah, just extremely. And the, and the excuse will be, well, it was raining. Well, it was raining for the Broncos too, and it should actually favor the Jets at home and the, the way they've been running the ball this year and the way the Broncos don't stop the run. And the Jets couldn't run the ball. Uh, there's a, on many levels, they're a big loser. I, I mean, that outplayed by the Broncos, and they had a shot to win. I mean, you could say at the end, maybe they they could have, they should have, could have, whatever. But uh, you know, let Rodgers get hit all game. You know, Moses being out not only makes the replacement fashion who struggle, but the whole offensive line, it kills the whole unit, which sometimes is a thing. I didn't think, Mo- I know Moses is good, experienced veteran. I didn't think he was that uh, important, you know, because it's not like they're going again, you know, trying to block TJ Watt out there. You know, I know the Broncos defense a little underrated, but so that was a disaster. I mean, Rogers getting beat up, hurt. He's banged up, not injured, but banged up after the game. And he's got to go to London next week. Brees Hall couldn't get anywhere, but, I, hard to believe they couldn't punch it in from the one yard line. I'm surprised he was a little down in this game, but I'm not even gonna blame the, like the running backs, uh, you know, or maybe even the offensive line. I, the play calling was pretty bad. I thought they there was especially right off the bat. There was a series where it was like pass, 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 like, and then you see Brees Hall get a negative yard gain. It's like all right, pass, 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 and it's like okay, Brees Brees Hall's not getting anywhere after a couple more carries, and then we're gonna keep pass like you just abandon, you know, sticking with the pass a little too much. And we, I guess we saw it in the Patriots game a little bit. They're up huge, and they're passing every play. So is that actually a thing? Um, you know, they have the ability to run the ball very effectively, and I think because how they, they kind of gave up on it too early just because they were running poorly right away. Uh, but you have the Broncos outmatched. Bo Nix has negative seven passing yards at halftime, and you're not winning this game by enough, like more, and you end up losing this game. You'll miss field goal at the end. Just a lot of disastrous stuff. Garrett Wilson, I don't think uh, maybe a hot take. Some people are going to think it's not hot. Garrett Wilson's not playing good this year. I, I'll say it. I think uh, got a lot of hype. He's obviously a talented player, but he's had some little things, you know, here and there, like not keeping his feet on in a route a couple weeks ago in a routine thing. You know, not being on the same page with Rodgers. You know, and Rodgers being in the right. Um, you know, fumble early in this game. I think he can play a lot better. So I had somebody I've actually been. I've been super disappointed with so far, even though he's still a good player. So, um, yeah, I thought that yeah, there's no way they should lose this game. No way they should lose this game. I guess, yeah, the, the rain's not much of an excuse for me because the Broncos played in it. Again, I think it should favor the Jets, but you can't really see any full team when it is raining. So maybe that's a slight thing. And the defense played good. The defense played good, I guess. That's the slight things that are keeping them from being number one and number two biggest losers. Number two has got to be the Cleveland Browns losing to the Raiders without star a bunch of star players and some of the best in football, highlighting Devontae Adams and Max Crosby, maybe the best defensive player in football, uh, when you have the other one on the other side playing, and they lose 16-20. to 20. I mean, they're up. There's so many things wrong with this. I will say, I'm going to start with this. The Browns, 
maybe should have won this game. I, I they had a chance at the end. If they, I mean, Raiders maybe got a little lucky you know, that they missed an extra point. They could have tied it. Who knows what would have happened? I really thought they were going to score a touchdown, but they didn't execute there. Um, they had a big touchdown. Their best play of the day. It looked like vintage Deshaun Watson. Big play, big touchdown. Actually stepped up past the pressure and got called back for holding. I didn't really, I know the announcers didn't either, didn't really agree uh, with with that call. So, uh, you know, maybe they got screwed, maybe a little bit. But at, at the end of the day, they're still a major loser for several reasons. You know, the Raiders missing star players, one. Uh, you got star players everywhere. They're not playing up to their potential. They're up 10 nothing. Things are actually starting great for a change, and they can't hang on. Uh, Stefanski's to blame a little bit. Once again, not enough carries to Jerome Ford. He was running very, very well. Not enough carries. I know you got down by a couple scores at one point, so I understand you can't run too much at that point, but there still should have been more runs before that point. I thought Deshaun Watson actually played decent. People won't talk about it. I thought he played decent. Uh, Everyone else letting him down. The offensive linemen, just guys blowing by them. I mean, Dewan Jones looked good when he filled in last year. Not anymore. Doesn't look good anymore. I mean, you got Hudson out there. Um, so they are injured there, but it look it is disastrous on the offensive line. Disastrous. I mean, a battle between the Browns and the Patriots, who's got the worst right now? Probably the Browns. Cooper dropping a ball ends up being interception, like brutal. Um, missed extra point. So, yeah, bad coaching, bad play on both sides of the ball. Not, not playing up to their talent whatsoever. Having a 10-0 lead. The Raiders missing star players. Having a chance at the end but because you missed the extra point. And you, Watson's got to throw it at the end. I know it's near impossible. You got to just... Whatever you can do to launch it up there at, at that point. I mean, absolutely. Um, there was somebody being held a little bit in the back, but not enough to call it. Like, you can't decide a game on that. But if you throw it in that area... Uh, they probably would have called it. So just put it back there, man. What are you waiting for? So, But other than that, I thought Watson didn't play that bad. Other than that that play right there, you got to kind of know what to do uh, you know, on that one. But they coming at the, at the number two biggest loser of week four. And the number one biggest loser of the week is definitely the Arizona Cardinals losing 14-42 to against the Washington Commanders. And they're the biggest loser for several reasons. Not just, not just because you got dominated, but you're, I mean, you're at home, you get dominated. And there's several reasons here. Uh, they, the, I, I'm going to stick with it. That the, the matchup should favor them at least somewhat. The command is it's common sense to me. The Commanders, Dan Quinn, run a lot of man coverage. No secret, no secret whatsoever. Maybe they mix in a little bit more zone, but and the defense has really been struggling. That's what Kyler Murray, Mar- Marvin Harrison's been awesome against man. They would they love they live to play against man coverage, especially with the scrambling ability. And the commander's defense in gen- general can't do much. I mean, Connor was able to run on them. They just got down by so much. They just couldn't. They took advantage on the first drive. Kyler has been playing great. Not this game. Not this game. I know the offensive line was really bad. That's another thing. The offensive line was awful. It's making it look like it is and against a pass rush that hasn't been able to do much. So is the offensive line a problem now? Uh, you know the. Do they need McBride to carry the weapons? And then, but Murray holding on to the ball, like even as a fourth down, he's just standing back there. You got to either run or let it go. He took a sack, or he rightfully rolled out of the pocket. When you're outside the pocket, you could throw the ball away for free, and he just took a sack, like he knew they were there, and he was hesitating a little bit. So this was a different Kyler Murray. Very, and I thought he played worse actually than what the stats show. Probably the stats aren't great, but the stats probably aren't terrible. Uh, there was just no reason for this. And defensively, I know the commander's been tricky on offense, uh, stopping them. But, man, they couldn't get off the field, couldn't couldn't stop on third and long, whatever. I mean, just, just brutal all the way around. And another thing that really stands out, another takeaway from this game is, I'm saying the Cardinals might be decent, but now I'm saying, no, they're not. And a lot of and this is the worst part because every single year, Every we talk about it every year. You see it every year. Every year, the first it's usually the first three weeks are the are the the key number three. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four, but, the, but usually it's the first three weeks. There's teams that lie to us. They look good, and then then they go downhill in the second half. It looks like the Cardinals are one of those teams, but what makes it worse? Usually those teams are three and zero oh after three weeks. They're one and two. They are now one and three, and they might be one of those joker teams. That is a bad. And I'm sure they're going to have good games. They're going to they're going to lose every game, but. And, you know, maybe they'll get better at some point. They're still young. Um, but that makes things worse. Defensively, another thing, they got no pass rush. And that was kind of our thought going into the year. I was very low on the Cardinals going into the year, probably lower than other people. People were telling me they could be sneaky. I, I said they could be a little sneaky. But my big thing was the lack of pass rush. And it hasn't really shown in the last couple weeks. 
today it showed, and now we're worrying about the offensive line against a pass rush that wasn't doing much. So a lot of things to start worrying about. It is too early to panic, but most certainly nowhere near as confident with this team as I was the last few weeks, and it happens to be the here that we are the week after kind of the mirage few weeks. So not great at all for these teams and the Cardinals. Got a couple of honorable mentions here. Uh, three actually, got to talk about the Steelers. Steelers were undefeated before this, but yeah, they were kind of just getting by without scoring a whole lot of points, and they play the Colts, who team that won last week but been struggling, and all of a sudden the Steelers can't stop the run. Some I haven't been sold on because the Steelers the last several years haven't really did good defenses, but can't really stop the run that well. Uh, you know, And the Colts are running all over them. Then Richardson running all over them. He goes down, and they can't really, they're sloppy, can't find ways to get back in the game there. Um, so yeah, it kind of makes you think, was it a week first few week, you know, playing against weaker teams or teams that aren't ready and just winning off pure defense? Is that going to keep up? Like, is it just one of those things where you can't just be too high, um, you know, on this team? So letting the Colts score that many points and even look good at defense at some point. Uh, and then the bills who just, I'm not too worried about the bills, but you know, I've been, you know, the run defense is an issue and it kind of finally showed it kind of was hidden a little bit the last couple of weeks because the offense got them up by so much. So the defense, it's pretty easy to play defense when you know what the opponent is doing. And when you're, they're down by so much, you know that they're passing and the run game is really not a factor. So they've been bad at the run the whole time. It just hasn't really showed till now. So when they play these teams that can run the ball, you know, and there's more out there, um, you know, they, they, they could be in trouble, you know, so that it's what could stop them from winning the champ, you know, winning the Super Bowl or bigger, or other big things. So that is an issue. You know, they finally, it's kind of like the saints, the first two weeks, the bills, the last two weeks, they finally were in a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. Finally played a better team that knows how to match up with them. Uh, and it didn't go great. I still think the bills are a great team. It's just a really, really, really bad matchup for them. Uh, and another one is not a team. It's on the Jaguars. Coaching, we talk about it a lot. Doug Peterson imp impressed Taylor. Uh, mainly, for, I mean, there's more than one play, but we got to highlight the one play. The Jags are about to go up two scores, and they're actually stopping the Texans at this point. And they, they can't get in from the goal line, but they fast forward. They still didn't get in to fourth down in goal at the one, maybe a hair closer, and they're going to go shotgun, QB draw. It's just pure stupidity, pure stupidity. A five-year-old would better be able to call a better play than that. I mean, it, it is even if it worked, it's pure stupidity. And then if they score there, they win the game. I know there was a little bit of time left. It didn't, you know, it was a bit after when the Texans scored. It was a ton. Of, it wasn't a ton of time, but they win the game if they score there. Um, you know, and, and you don't know who's calling plays. It looks like on the side, it looks like Peterson's calling plays, and then you're trying to figure out if he's taking over play calling duties and he's complimenting, you know, press on what he's doing. I don't know. It's a disaster right now. Um, now they got to go to London, so I don't know if you can fire Peterson right now. And who are you going to make the head coach? Nobody's doing good right now over there. They don't win a game in London. You come back, you definitely fire. Somebody's got to be fired for sure. But uh, they, you can't call the Jags a complete loser because every, the offense played better. You got Lawrence going a little bit more, Kirk going a little bit more. Bigsby was awesome. The defense had a, 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 a slate, I suppose, a window where they played pretty well against a really high-powered offense. Uh, and they choked this one. They choked it, and it started right there, right then with that awful, dumbass play call. So got a shout-out in a bad way, uh, the coaches here. But that'll do it for this one where we highlight the the biggest and the baddest teams, I guess, in a bad way, the baddest. Uh, here, the next video, Monday night video, I tier and grade teams, every single team, based on their performance. So you kind of can put these two videos together. Don't worry, we talk about every team. And then on to the week five content, the picks and everything else here. So make sure you subscribe to notifications on so you don't miss any of that, and it will be much, much appreciated. Very important to follow us on Twitter for live analysis and my you know, any pick changes or bets on there on Twitter. So very important to follow that link pinned in the comments for anything you look for. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.